You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. It's the last day of February 2022. And what a day it is. There is an 800 pound bear in the room and everybody's talking about him. And what is he going to do to the economy, the global economy, the global financial system, just when the system was at its most vulnerable this happens and it's induced, I guess. And our good friend, uh, Craig Hemke with us and now, you know him well from tfmetalsreport.com. Craig, welcome back. So what do you make of Russia? What, uh, what can't you say about it? Well, gosh, there's so many things in play here, Kerry. You know, on my site, this is something we've been tracking for the last eight years. It was eight years ago when the whole Maidan revolution went down. And uh, this has been something I've been worried about ever since, right, that they would get to this point. And, you know, another thing we talked about, you and I, for, what, a decade, is de-dollarization, right? And uh, the eventuality that the dollar would at least lose some of its reserve currency status and the U.S. weaponizing the dollar and, uh, the, and the monetary system against countries that it is disagreeing with. Now, look, I'm not going to get into, you know, whether they should do that to Russia or not, given what's going on there, but they have. And there are going to be long term implications for that, because, you know, remember the old line, uh, Carrie and uh, Hunt for Red October, where uh, uh, Admiral Painter, uh, well, Fred Thompson, you know, once ran for president and he said he looks at uh, Jack Ryan, he says, well, what's his plan? And Jack Ryan says his plan. And he says, son, a Russian doesn't take a dump without a plan. <laughs> and so um, there's no way that the Russians and the Chinese have kind of war gamed all this stuff out, every eventuality. Now, maybe the invasion is going worse for Russia than they expected, but all this other stuff they had to be planning on. And, um, and these are major long term implications, even in the short term. Obviously, now, you know, people are figuring out the Fed's not going to be hiking rates eight times like people were saying a couple months ago. And we can see this already playing out in markets like the like the TIP ETF, which is an ETF of those Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. It's been soaring after, you know, just dumping for the first six weeks of the year. It's, you know, it's more than recouped half those losses already now. And so this really is going to impact things for the remainder of the year. And I just would advise anybody not to get too worked up on any one day's metal activity. Uh, you know, the COMEX is a is a scam of a market anyway. Keep playing the long term, keep positioning yourself for all this craziness so that, you know, you're not caught flat footed. Yeah, well, I agree that they probably had a plan for this, but I don't think that uh, anybody in their right mind ever thought that uh, Russia wouldn't be in Kiev within 24 hours. And yeah. that was the plan. That's the mistake. And I think a lot of what's happening now outside the plan, because Ukraine has like uh, no military, you know, it's uh, it's totally uh, appeared to be totally defenseless and yeah. they were just going to march in there and they were going to be welcomed as heroes, kind of right. like you were in Iraq. And as it turns out, the Ukrainians despise the Russians, the true Ukrainians. There are lots of Russian Ukrainians and Ukrainian Russians, but they despise them. So. All of this uh, looks to me like uh, no, because if Russia was in Kiev, installed their puppet, that would have been the end of it already. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, had no plans. And, and yeah, and that, that's all part of the unknown unknowns, right? Well, then that a Rumsfeld phrase, yeah. you know, and uh, and that's what you get. And, and so, yeah, you know, I was spent a lot of time thinking about it over the weekend, you know, in the hope that maybe some good comes out of this, you know, that eventually... Um, you know, this kind of this Russian idea that they are still some kind of a monster superpower that has to, you know, with a big place in the world that maybe they just figured that they just have a place in the world, you know, uh, in time. And um, and there, you know, we can look back a year or two from now and go, OK, you know, a lot of people died and it was a mess and, you know, destruction. Um, but it was toward a positive in the end. But, man, we're a long ways from that. That's for sure. You and I lived through the 
the previous Cold War. Wow. You know, uh, growing up in the in the seventies, you know, and the movies about nuclear war and all that kind of stuff. And duck and you know, cover, duck and cover, yeah, for Atomic Cafe. I mean, that, that's you know, it's all pretty unlikely. But you know, in the last thirty years, the chance of nuclear war on a daily basis was zero point zero percent. You know, if the idea now that it's zero point five percent, that's a huge increase, and you know, a little unsettling to say the least. So. Uh, but I mean, but I again, I, I would be more concerned at this point about the long term implications of what has been done. China definitely is noticing. Right. They're going, OK, OK, we see what the playbook is now. So we better get our act together uh, for this, you know, put some infrastructure in place so that they can never do this to us. And um, again, it's all very important for the dollar, the dollars, reserve currency status, the precious metals, everything else. And I hope people are thinking long term, not just, you know, the day to day. For sure. Weaponizing the dollar, excluding Russia from SWIFT. Yeah. Like, oh, they're doing it to me. It's kind of like uh, when you have like a girlfriend and she talks badly about her last boyfriend <laughs> and you think, hey, gee, one day that could be me she's talking about. And that's a red flag. There's something else at play here, though. I think this is a China play. China, you know, their country is an ecological disaster and they're looking to colonize and they've been de facto colonizing Siberia for for over a decade now. And this is the opportunity to, like, take over that part of the country. Hmm. I think uh, this is a China play and they suckered Russia into this saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do everything you want. We're on your side. We're on your side. And now that uh, they're, the wars actually happened, it's like, oh, you guys are on your own and yeah. mitigated disaster. But what about bank runs in Europe taking place outside? I've heard in Poland there are bank runs and right. European banks were already on the rocks. This could be right. the thing, which is like you said, the swap lines, the lifeline from the Fed. You can be sure they're like uh, they're hitting the return on the keyboard with uh, with 15 zeros on it. Right. Right. Oh, no doubt about it. And and, and again, I, that's the fragility of the system. Right. I mean, we've talked about this for years and I would imagine in, you know, to some regard, people have been out there going, oh, yeah, those guys, you know, they just they got their tinfoil hats on. They're always worried about the world coming to an end and all that kind of jazz. But I mean, this has all been right there in front of you. You know, my tagline has always been on my site. You know, the end of the great Keynesian experiment is on us. So prepare accordingly. And, and that's all you and I have ever really tried to get people to do, just to be prepared yeah. for when these things finally play out. You know, you don't want to right. be you don't want to be the one standing in line at the ATM, do you? I mean, for crying out loud. So have some cash, have some physical metal, have some lead, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, just because when the time comes that you need that stuff and you can't get your hands on it, but yet Carrie and Craig have been telling you for decades to prepare for it, you're going to feel like an idiot. For sure. You know? So be for prepared sure. because all of this stuff, uh, this is totally... I'm, I'll give you one more thing here. You know, I think the last time we spoke, we talked about my my annual forecast that I write every January. And I think right in the very first paragraph, I said, I, you know, this is going to be this might be a fool's errand trying to predict uh, metals prices, if anything, because this is going to be a wildly unpredictable and volatile year. Boy, we've gotten that part right <laughs> so far. That's for sure. Oh, my goodness. Well, one thing's for sure. If, uh, if there's trouble in Europe, the money flows to the U.S., and clearly that's happening now. Well, who knows how this thing's going to turn out? Like I said, uh, they're expecting a blitzkrieg thing to be over with, and then they'd, uh, they'd move on. And it's going to have repercussions for everything, especially uranium. Uranium's taken off and palladium. Yeah. Hey, palladium, what about all those uh, catalytic converters? They'll have to go back to pl platinum. Oh, wait a second. But platinum, a lot of that comes from Russia, too. Well, what yeah. are you going to use instead of that? Dude, hey, Terry, let's remember talking about palladium a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, we used to call it the, you know, not the magic silver bullet, but the palladium bullet, because the London palladium and uh, New York palladium markets are linked just like and they operate in the same fractional reserve system uh, that gold and silver do. And that holes in the palladium, you know, just in time delivery and all that kind of stuff. 
could easily blow up palladium, remember? And, and people go, wait a second, if palladium's like this, gold and, you know, gold and silver could be subject to this too. Remember talking about that? Oh, yeah. Sure. So now here we are, 46% of the world's palladium comes from, London, uh, from uh, Russia. So watch palladium really closely. I'll give you another one. How about the grains? You know, Russia's the largest wheat exporter in the world. Wheat's up like 8% today. I mean, it was soared last week, came yeah. back down Friday, now it's back up today. Corn, soybeans, uh, Russia is a major exporter of fertilizer. You know, so how are you going to get uh, you know, American farmers are going to shift this year from uh, corn to soybeans because it's going to be so damn expensive to try to plant and grow corn without with anhydrous ammonia and potash and everything else going through the roof. Corn's in freaking everything. Not only do you feed it to your livestock, you know, fatten them up and get them ready for market. How about high fructose corn syrup and everything else? I mean, it's a major input. So, I mean, it, this is again, then that's just one little tiny thing. Yeah. Hey, well, all of this. The world without a high fructose corn syrup would not be so yeah. honest. No, but, but, it, but it's an input into everything. And so yeah. the cost of everything is going to continue to soar. And the Fed's not going to be able to, to uh, cut or to hike rates as mu- aggressively as they might want to. And so you're going to get this continued runaway kind of stagflationary recession. And it's, I, again, so I, getting all the way back to, as we record this here on the 28th, clear intervention today across all markets by the working group on financial markets. They knew this was going to, and this will probably continue through the rest of the week because it's such a tumultuous, crazy thing. So don't get, please, people, don't be freaked out by, gosh, gold's only up $10 today. Uh Look, man, just keep your eye on the ball in the long game. This is some game-changing stuff. And, uh, uh, man, we got some kind of period of weeks and months ahead, no doubt about that. You know what else I think is coming? I just wrote an article about it. Uh, not just U.S., but global wage price controls. Oh, huh? I yeah. don't see how they avoid it. Yeah. Because they can't do anything monetarily. Right. And they'll right. just uh, resurrect uh, the Nixon doctrine. That, right. Well, like that works out so well last yeah. time. Yeah. Well, they, all they want to do, Craig, is flatten the price curve. You know, 90 days to flatten the price curve. <laughs> right? I right. like it. I like it. It'll be temporary. Don't worry. Everything's right. temporary. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Be exactly. transitory. Look, and again, I, I, you make make that reference. We've talked about that lots too. You know, the the only uh, I guess uh, comparison, if you will, to current days is the late 1970s. You know, Cold War, Hot War, all these inflation, stagflation, recession, all that stuff. You know, gold went up nine uh, nine times from 100 to 900 in about three years, and there are mining shares. That went from 30 cents to $30. So oh, yeah. I just, please, every I mean, one, pray for peace, for God's sake. You know, the last thing we need to do is things to get out of hand. Uh, but then uh, keep your wits about you and and try not to get caught up in the day-to-day tick for tick and, and uh, focus on the big picture because this is all, this yeah. is all some wildly bullish stuff for the precious metals and the miners. Everything has changed. You know, the, uh, the uh, playing... The uh, chessboard has been totally rearranged here. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Who knows where it's going to end? But, it, you know, this could go on for a few years here of sporadic wars breaking out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this thing will probably remedy itself. I can't see how Ukraine prevails, although they could be having uh, in, in an insurgency in Ukraine for years to come because those people really hate their Russian masters. And yeah. they're not just going to lie down, which we've seen. But yeah. in the end, they can't win. But they certainly have made uh, Russia look not so uh, fierce anymore, the Russian bear. Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever.
Yeah. And you made a great point earlier. Uh, I would, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I hadn't even thought of it, that uh, China would pull the rug out from under them. I remember seeing some stuff last week about how, right. They, you know, China says Russia or Ukraine's border should be, you know, they should be have integrity and Russian, you know, Ukraine should be left, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. What if, you know, she sat there and kind of goaded Putin, you know, Oh yeah, we got your back on this deal. And then all of a sudden that whole collapses on, you know, everything collapses on Putin in the next few weeks. And all of a sudden, you know, hey, the country breaks up even more than it did. Right. Right. Remember, uh, I'm ago. thinking of risk, right? They're piling their armies and, and, and rolling into Kamchatka or whatever. <laughs> they don't even have to. They just got to open up uh, Chinese restaurants yeah. in Siberia and the people will go. Hey, mm. but this does have an adverse effect on China's already fragile real estate market and stock market and, and their efforts uh, at hegemony, which I don't think anyone can deny. Uh, really, when you think about it, it's not going to help their real estate markets. But I guess it gives them cover to just print up and bail out the whole yeah. sector now. Yeah. Right? And, 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 and carry one more point to that before I forget, you know, back in when we talked about my annual forecast, that was one of the things I said was definitely in our favor is that Chinese credit impulse. Um, that is a measure of Chinese monetary policy either getting tighter or looser. And when the credit impulse is going up, that means they're loosening policy, which is exactly what they're doing. Well, that is directly related to rising commodity prices every single time that happens. And it usually runs for about 12 to 14 months and it's gone up three months in a row. So think of that going on all year too. Um, you know, they're trying to get their economy going again after two years of COVID shutdowns and everything else. So there's just, you know, now the, you know, the Fed's put going to have to put things on the back burner. Inflation is not going to get under control. Again, I think it's pretty easy to concoct, concoct a scenario where, you know, over the balance of this year, the precious metals are going to be going higher. <laughs> and that's, um, that's an important thing to make sure everyone's aware of. And inflationary spirals are generational. Okay? Yeah. We could go back to 60s, 70s arguably ended in the 80s with 20% rates, which we can't have now because that would just like implode the entire global economy. And we could go back to World War II, 40s, 50s. Um, you know, the spirals last and they keep going until they can anymore. And right, like so many of you out there weren't even alive in the 70s, but you're learning quickly that your cash is trash and when your purchasing power is eroding so quickly, you don't save, you start buying stuff, whatever you can buy, right? That will, uh, because it'll be worth more and you might not be able to get it also because mm -hmm. in the 70s, we weren't confronted with major shortages. We got these major supply chain shortages that this is only going to exacerbate. Right, right, right. And, and again, take it down to what you're seeing in grains and in energy and base metals and everything else. Um, yeah, 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 Carrie, it was just not even two years ago, Powell was worried about deflation and deflationary yeah. expectations. <laughs> uh, can hold. Um, yeah, it, it's hard to see where this is going to reverse. Somebody told me last week, you know, we don't have a business cycle anymore. We just have a credit cycle. Yeah. And I think that's right. Um, and this credit cycle has already turned. I think you can see that with a 10 year note is back to like 185 on all this, you know, um, I mean, we're headed in that direction like we were in 2010 and 2019. And so um, I, I, I just can't emphasize enough for people. This is you need to be paying attention. You need to prepare for all eventualities, you know, as hor horrific as some might seem. You've got to be thinking about that. But then in the hope that eventually things kind of simmer down, recognize that, you know, the some serious fundamental changes that have, uh, have taken place to the generally accepted investment outlook yeah. for this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the extrapolators uh, have had to change their tune, you know, because right. all the financial economists with making their forecasts, they're just extrapolating whatever is happening now. Yeah. Future. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and again, you know, we talk about the dollar and again, this is we've talked about you and I have discussed this for years. In the end, it's just basically Incon 101, right? We all know a little something about that. You know, if the if the supply of something is increasing while the demand is going down, the curve shifts and the price or the value goes down of whatever object that is, oranges, homes, cars, 
or dollars. And what this essentially in the end does is, as you know, uh, new systems are put in place uh, to come, you know, to go against this dollar based system is it will uh, reduce the demand for dollars globally as supply continues to increase. And so uh, that drives inflation, that drive the precious metals, all that stuff. And this is all you're seeing all of this now yeah. uh, play out in pretty quick, pretty quickly in real time. Hey, the propaganda here has been uh, shocking. Do you think that uh, Putin's really having a meltdown? Do you think that uh, that the Russian economy implodes after 15 days of war because they yeah. can't afford it anymore? Um, yeah. I'm skeptical of a lot of what is said there, but I do well, believe he's pissed because they didn't win it the first day. That I do believe. Yeah. Well, and hey, how far are we away from nationalization of stuff? You know, it goes with price I mean, controls. If or no, but I mean, like uh, Putin, Putin saying, "Hey, wait a second! If you're going to cut us off from this, well, we're just going to nationalize your oil wells that you, uh, BP or uh, uh, Shell, have put in. You know, we're going to nationalize your base metal mines uh, that your company. You, you got your assets here in the in the in Russia. Hey, you know what? We'll freeze them within Russia. How about that? You yeah. know, so he's got a whole bunch of different things that he can do that people aren't really uh, thinking about and." Uh, sequestration of assets. So what we right. did to the uh, Germans and the Swiss during World right. War II, froze all their assets, let them operate, but basically uh, none of the profits get repatriated. Hey, look, yeah. the corporations will all be trading with Russia regardless. Um, maybe the higher profile ones, but uh, you know, corporations always trade with their country's enemies during wars for GM. Uh, there's a whole host of companies that traded with the Nazis in World War II. This time will be no different. And that's why maybe these sanctions uh, have a lot less bite. And well, evolving situation, going to be interesting to see the way it works out. We are certainly living in interesting times, Craig. No doubt about that, my friend. And uh, again, I just can't stress enough. People need to be Paying attention and uh, thinking about it, you know, this is not a time just to be like, you know, bury your head in the sand. It's oh, it will be. Okay. I mean, there's not much we can do about it, right? That's for I mean, sure. I can't spend my time worrying about nuclear war because whether I worry about it or not, is it going to make it happen or not happen? Uh, but what I can do is is think it through, prepare for as many eventualities as I can come up with, so that as things happen, I'm not run around panicked, uh, you know, like everyone else. It's better to have a plan, even if the plan isn't workable, than yeah. to have no plan whatsoever. And that's what I've been saying for years. Hey, go over to tfmetalsreport.com. Right there. I hey, look, our the community's been on fire lately, man. With uh, we got a, you know a couple thousand people globally, all political stripes. You know, we just know we're all in it together. And uh, I think uh, I, I actually I see it every day in the comments section. I mean, everybody kind of thanking each other. Uh, for being a part of the site and uh, for the information that we're all able to share there. So I, I just couldn't be a more valuable time. Uh, all right. part of it. And sign up for a little more than a latte. Uh, you can be yeah. tied into that community, really smart people, really on the ball. Thank you. Oh, it never ceases me, to amaze me how astute your community is, Craig. So Thank that's you, off Craig. to you. Got a question for Craig? Shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the free newsletter. Craig, we'll talk to you again real soon. All right, my friend, hang in there. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.